Hey everybody, just a short video tonight on a subject that when I first heard about it, I thought was inconceivable, hard to fathom, tough to swallow, but as with any ancient subject, you just have to look into it, keep your mind open, and just look at the evidence. And I came to the conclusion that this was at least a possibility. And this is philipcoppins.com, and the story is on ancient nuclear warfare. And it is entitled Best Evidence, and the intro says this. Are the Indian remains of Mohanjandaro and Harappa, their sudden abandonment, and the apparent discovery of an ancient site with layer of, of radioactive ash the best available evidence for the possibility that our ancient ancestors possessed highly advanced technology, which might have included atomic warfare? And the beginning of the article, they go over... Um, some ancient astronaut theories, authors Eric Von Daniken and Zachariah Sitchin. And what they proposed, um, I've read Zachariah Sitchin, and a lot of the stuff he puts out is good historical evidence about the remote past. Some of his stuff cannot be corroborated by other sources, so I kind of take it with a grain of salt. But it goes down and it says this. Another candidate for a nuclear explosion so far left untouched by most of the ancient astronaut proponents is the Indus River Valley, where towns such as Harappa and Mohanjandaro flourished in 3000 BC, but were then quickly abandoned. One answer that has been put forward is that the ancient cities might have been irradiated by an atomic blast. If true, it would be impossible to ignore the conclusion that the ancient civilization possessed high technology. And it says this. Archaeologist Francis Taylor stated that etchings in some nearby temples, he translated, suggested that they prayed to be spared from the great light that was coming to lay ruin to the city. It's so mind-boggling to imagine that some civilization had nuclear technology before we did. The radioactive ash adds credibility to the ancient Indian records that describe atomic warfare. He says, furthermore, when the excavations of Harappa and Mohanjandaro reached the street level, they discovered skeletons scattered about the cities, many holding hands and sprawling in the streets as if some instant horrible doom had killed its inhabitants. People were just lying unburied in the streets of the city, where there seemed to be no one available to bury them afterwards. What could cause such a thing? Why did the bodies not decay or get eaten by wild animals? Furthermore, there is no apparent cause of, physically vi of a physically violent death. Furthermore, Alexander Gorbovsky, in Riddles of Ancient History, published in 1966, reported the discovery of at least one human skeleton in the area with a level of radioactivity approximately 50 times greater than it should have had due to normal radiation, or natural radiation. Furthermore, thousands of fused lumps, christened black stones, have been found at Mah Mahajandaro. These appear to be fragments of clay vessels that melted together in extreme heat. And it says, another curious sign of an ancient nuclear war in India is a giant crater near Mumbai, formerly Bombay. This near, nearly circular 2,154 meter diameter loner crater, located 400 kilometers northeast of Mumbai, and dated at less than 50,000 years old, could be related to nuclear warfare of antiquity. No trace of any meteoric material has been found at the site or in the vicinity, and this is the world's only known impact crater in basalt. Indications of a great shock from a pressure exceeding 600,000 atmosphere and intense abrupt heat indicated by basalt glass sphericals can be ascertained from the site. With the apparent discovery of this radiated area, parallels were quickly drawn to the Mahabharata, the Indian epic which indeed speak of gloom and destruction, and parts of it read like this. It was a single projectile charged with all the power of the universe. An incandescent column of smoke and flame as bright as a thousand suns rose in all of its splendor. It was an unknown weapon, an iron thunderbolt, a gigantic messenger of death. 
and it goes on to say this, the corpses were so burned as to be rec unrecognizable, the hair and nails fell out, pottery broke without apparent cause, and the birds turned white. After a few hours, all foodstuffs were infected. To escape this fire, the soldiers threw themselves in the stream to wash themselves and their equipment. And when it says the hair and nails fell out, well, you have to relate that to nuclear exposure because that's exactly what happens. And to conclude my video, I came across this article on WorldwideAshram.org. I think I said that right. And it says this. Check out the scientific evidence and the evidence of our sole memory of a historic nuclear devastation in prehistoric times. And this article is about Robert Oppenheimer, the so-called father of the atomic bomb. It says Oppenheimer quoted the ancient Vedic text when he commented upon the release of nuclear energy. He said, I am become the destroyer of worlds. And that is taken right out of the Vedic text. It says, it is up to steer the world in this time away from those who seek selfish power and the death of others and towards compassion, truth, and light. It says, Robert Oppenheimer is remembered as the father of the atomic bomb. During a college lecture, a student asked, was the atomic test at Alamogordo the first nuclear blast? And the student meant, was there a U.S. program before Alamogordo? Oppenheimer answered, yes, in modern times. Meaning, our atomic program was the first, not counting the ancient nuclear wars of the distant past. Oppenheimer was a student of the old books of India, such as the Mahabharata. And the article just goes on to tell how Oppenheimer... Uh, studied the Sanskrit, he went to India, and he called his visit to India the most influential thing in his life, and I'm going to leave the link below. So I found it very interesting that we have this evidence of a nuclear blast in remote history, and the father of the atomic bomb here in this country was well versed in ancient Indian history and the Mahabharata in ancient text. Just thought this was very interesting, something to think about. I'll leave the links below. Have a nice night.